And what is the moment we're in now? Are we, in your judgment, in a moment in which the world order is going to change? Yes, we're changing the world order. Okay. In 1945, we started the new world order. What I mean is, over throughout history, there's a fight for control because there's no world court that you go to and plead your case. And so there's a fight for power. So there's a war, and then the winners come out of that war, and the winners set the rules. And so 1945, the United States had 80% of the world's money. Gold was money at the time. It had half the world's GDP. It had a monopoly on military power. So the U.S. set the world order. That's why the United Nations is in New York. Washington, D.C. has the IMF and the World Bank. And its currency became the reserve currency. And its currency became the reserve currency because of that, that set of circumstances. Okay, things evolve. Things change. Okay, over history. So the three big things that are changing now that haven't occurred in our lifetime is the amount of debt and money creation, which affects the value of money, and you could see it affecting what's going on every day. Large debt Inflation, means the printing of money. Right. The large debt puts the puts central bankers in a choice. Do you pay it back with hard money or do you pay it back with printed devalued money? And if you pay it back with hard money, it's hard. In other words, that's when you have debt crises. Mm -hmm. So in all cases, they eventually print money and that produces inflation, right? So that dynamics, the first- And that's the place we are at this moment. That's the place we are at this moment. Okay. And we'll talk about that. We'll drill down on that. In, in a minute. The second, the second is um, when there's a, a great internal conflict. Usually when there's a large wealth and values gap at, at the same time as you have a financial problem, then you get populism, populism of the left and populism of the right. In other words, those who feel disenfranchised want people who are going to fight for them. They don't want compromisers. They want, don't want them to be in the middle because middle means that they're not fighting for them. They want them to have guts so that you have populists of the left and populists and of their the positions right. harden and their positions harden and there are no compromises. That's why we're potentially in a situation that you could see in one of these elections, maybe in 2024, that neither side would accept losing. Perhaps we see that. That's, you see, maybe you don't follow the rulings of the Supreme Court. Anyway, when that's a serious we, question today. Serious. So these things have not happened in our lifetime, but they happen many times in history. So if you look at that, you see from those patterns why the gaps begin, become greater and the positions harden and you see the dynamic. So that's mm -hmm. the second. And the third is the rise of a great power to challenge the existing great power. In other words, I, I gave you the example of the United States was so dominant in 1945. Now it's not as dominant. It is not dominant. In other words, China and the opposition is as strong as the United States and its allies. And so we have a conflict. And there are five kinds of wars. And they start in this order, just sequentially, typically. A trade war, a technology war, a geopolitical influence war. Then you get into a capital and economic warfare, which we are now with sanctions. They always happened in history. And then there's a military war. And so you could see that progression happen through time. And that creates a template. So I like to look at the template and then plot dots to see how we're transpiring relative to that template. 